Hello, McMaster community. My name is Jen Stanley, and I am one of the yoga teachers with the recreation department. And you can also find me doing administration in the pediatrics, uh, pediatric genetic department in the main hospital here on campus. So I am here today to guide you through a gentle stretch and relax style yoga class. It's suitable for all levels um, and you don't need anything other than a yoga mat or even a towel on your floor or on your carpet, wherever you've got some space. If you are experienced with some yoga classes and you'd like to have some props available, maybe a strap um, or it could be a belt, a bathrobe tie, even a towel, you might want to have that available. And you also might want to have uh, a block to use or a book or a rolled up towel. Um, all of these things optional. You certainly don't need them to have a movement uh, practice, but just something you might want to have on hand. And of course I have to go through the safety stuff um, before we do any activity. So, McMaster University advises that participation in this activity contains elements of risk, both obvious and inherent. Please make sure you have adequate space around you to perform the activity safely. Be aware of your surroundings, possible hazards, for example, lights, tables, or sharp corners, and other people or pets who may be in your space as you participate in the activity. If you experience faintness, dizziness, pain or shortness of breath at any time while participating in the activity, you should stop participating immediately. If you participate in this activity, you acknowledge that you are voluntarily participating at your own risk and such risk may be associated with physical exertion that may be strenuous at times and could cause physical injury. But this is a gentle practice and we will be focusing on our movement which will stay low to the mat and we'll focus on our breath. So thank you so much for taking this time to do a little something that is so good for you. So you can just start out by laying down on your back on your mat in your shavasana and you can let your legs be long and take your feet wide apart maybe out to the corners of your mat you can take your arms wide out to your sides or maybe bring your palms to your belly, whatever feels comfortable for you. And just keeping in mind, my job here is as a guide. So as we move through the various poses, I'll offer modifications, but you know your body best. So if you need to make any kind of adjustment to make the pose feel better or work better for you, you are more than welcome to do whatever you need to make this practice your own. And that includes backing out of a pose early. You could skip a pose entirely if you know it's not the right thing for you today. And if you need to take a rest or take a drink, please do whatever you need to do. Listen to your body. We don't force anything and just enjoy yourself. So from your Shavasana, just allow yourself just a few moments to just be heavy on your mat. If you'd like to close your eyes or let your gaze be heavy and just find your breath. So some nice, slow, deep inhales. and long exhales and each time you exhale can you let go of whatever you're carrying around with you today if it's a to-do list if it's busy thoughts if it's worries about next week can you just allow those things to float away here in this practice There are only two things you need to do during our time here, and that is to move 
and to breathe. That's the end of the list. And if you'd like to continue on from here, I'll invite you to bring your legs together long on your mat. Bring your arms up overhead in the number 11. Take a nice deep breath and come to a full body stretch. So from the tips of your fingers to the tips of your toes. And exhale, let that go. One more time, nice big breath. Make yourself long, long, long. And exhale, let that go. Bend your knees, soles of the feet to the mat. And then draw your knees in towards your chest or maybe a little closer to your shoulders, palms to your knees and give yourself a little rock side to side. So we want to warm up the low back, get some fresh blood flow through the area, give yourself a little massage. Because no matter what we do in our day, whether you've been sitting at a computer a lot or if you've been standing on your feet or doing lots of running around, the low back is involved in pretty much everything and it doesn't get a whole lot of attention and care. So let's give it a moment. Just a few more times, side to side, just gently. Just to prepare the back for some movement. We'll keep the right knee tucked in. Extend your left leg long. Left heel to the mat, flex the left toes, and draw some circles with your right knee. So a few times one way. And a few times back the other way. So just warming up the right hip socket, just preparing for movement. Take your left palm to the outside of your right knee and draw your right knee across your body. And your knee, it might come over a few inches. It might find the floor on the other side of your mat. You may use a prop to support your knee. So we're opening up the right hip, right arm extends out long as a counterbalance and you can keep your gaze to the ceiling or take it over your right shoulder if your neck is okay with that. And if I happen to mess up my left side and right side or you mess up your left side, right side, we'll be doing each pose on both sides. So as long as you're doing once on the left, once on the right, we're all going to be just fine at the end. Bring your gaze to neutral, right knee back to center, right foot to the mat, and then allow your right knee to fall open. Foot comes somewhere along the inside of your left leg. So we're opening the front of the right hip. And if you have really tight hips, you might want to send your toes a little closer toward your left foot. And that's going to lessen the pressure or the tension of the opening in this right hip. If you've got lots of space in your hips, well, maybe you bring your right heel a little higher up towards your pelvis. Head and shoulders are connected to the mat. And if it feels like you've got a lot of tension or that you're sort of gripping with your right glute muscle, See if you can allow that muscle to soften. It is a big muscle. It holds a lot of energy and a lot of tension. And if it's tight, it's actually going to prevent this right hip from opening as much as it could. So if you're able to soften your right hip, you'll probably notice 
that this right leg is going to open a little more all by itself. And we'll close the right knee back to center. Bring the left knee in to meet it. And then both knees in toward the chest or the shoulders again. Give yourself another rock side to side. Or if you could draw some big loopy circles with your hips. Just a little more tension for the low back. And then keep the left knee tucked in this time. Right leg extends long, heel to the mat. Right toes flex and draw your circles with the left knee. And a few times the other way. Right palm to the outside of the left knee. Come to the second half of your twist. So we'll draw the left knee over toward the right. Left arm extends out, gaze neutral or over the left shoulder. And this side could feel completely different than the other side. We tend to favor one side of our bodies over the other. And as a result, we're usually a little uneven and have more tightness in one side. So you might need a prop or a support or somehow need to adjust on this side where you didn't on the other. And that's perfectly fine. We treat each pose individually, but we also treat each side of a pose individually. When we develop this tightness in one of our sides over a period of years, it's movement patterns, it's things like always leaning into one hip when you wait in line or always carrying a bag on your right shoulder. These things take years to develop. So it could be that you weren't even aware that you had this difference until you actually spend a little time feeling what's going on in your body. And take the gaze back to center, left knee back to center, foot lands, and let your left knee fall wide open. Adjust your foot up or down the inside of your right leg. Check in with that left side glute muscle. Is it really tight and can you allow it to open or soften a little? And we're focusing a lot on hips and also shoulders in this practice because we are spending time learning from home, working from home, so much time spent on laptops or tablets, phones, sitting there trying to get work done. And that's not great for the hips. It's not great for the shoulders either. So hopefully this will give you some movement that you can do in between your classes or during your day just to help keep some movement going, keep your muscles strong, open up your joints. Close your left knee back, bend your right knee to meet. Send the sole of your right foot up to the ceiling. Turn your toes to about two o'clock, right ankle to the top of the left knee and press your right knee away from you. So this is thread the needle and you should feel an opening in your right hip. And if this feels good, you can stay right here. If you'd like to add on, try lifting your left foot off the mat. Send your right hand through that space between your legs and take a hold of the back of your left thigh. Draw your left leg in towards your chest. Right toes flex toward the right knee. And you can adjust your left foot a little higher or a little lower, and that can change the sensation of the opening in this right hip. Again, keeping head and shoulders connected to the floor. If you find that you're having to lift 
then maybe lower that left foot back to the mat and just work from there. Release your left foot to the floor. Hang on to this figure four shape with your legs. Slide your right thigh over your left and allow your legs to fall left. So another twist. And if having your right thigh over your left feels like a little too much, just unwind your legs and bring them side by side and allow them to fall left. Eyes to the ceiling or over the right shoulder, and you can let your arms fall wherever feels good. So maybe out to the sides, or you could take left palm to right thigh, arms overhead, whatever feels good here. Bring the gaze back to center, knees back to center, unwind, reset your hips, and then we'll send the sole of the left foot up to the ceiling, toes turn to 10 o'clock, left ankle to the top of the right knee, press your left knee away. Option to stay right here or lift your right foot, send your hands through, and if you're Feeling like your shoulders are a little sticky, you could always use a towel or a strap or a belt. You can loop that around the back of your right leg, hold on in either hand and use that strap to draw your leg in. It's just giving a little extra length to your arms. Flex the left toes towards your left knee and that right foot might come a little higher or a little lower. Just find the good spot where your hip on the left side is feeling nice and open. Right foot finds the mat. Slide the left thigh over the right. Allow your legs to fall right. Option to send your gaze to the left and you can repeat your arms or you can try something different on this side. Gaze neutral, knees to center, unwind, reset. And if you want to bring your knees in one more time, give yourself one more little rock or draw some big loopy circles with the hips. Feet to the floor. Take your right arm up overhead and come on to your right side body. So we'll just pause here for a moment. This is fetal pose. Draw your knees close to your chest. That's going to give space to the low back and you can use your bicep as a pillow. And this is a restful pose or a restorative pose. You can always come here for a little break if you need. A 
And now that your back has been released from the mat, just notice when you inhale, your back taking up a little more space. So maybe your shoulder blades come a little wider apart. Maybe you feel a little extra length in your spine. And then bring your left palm to the mat, press yourself up into tabletop. So onto your hands and knees, wrists are under shoulders, knees are under hips. And we're gonna do a few cat cows. So just a back exercise. So from your tabletop, allow your hips to roll forward, drop your belly, Lift your chest, lift your gaze, that's cow. And then hips roll back, back rounds up to the ceiling, head lowers, chin to chest, that's your cat. Inhale, drop your belly, lift your gaze. Exhale, round all the way up to the ceiling, head lowers. So just come through a few rotations here on your own breath at your own pace. And it should almost seem like you can feel each individual vertebra move in a wave as you roll your belly down and up. And then when you've gone back and forth a few times, just come back to a neutral spine and tabletop. So the, the back is flat. We'll take the right shoulder toward the right hip and let your gaze come behind to look at your right foot or maybe the wall behind you. So we're lengthening out of the left hip, up the left side body. And when you inhale, you're going to feel these left side ribs open up and the spaces in between the intercostal muscles. And we don't do a whole lot to lengthen our side body. So the oblique muscles around our waist and then the intercostal muscles, our rib cage, we don't do a whole lot to activate those areas in a day. So really take advantage and when you inhale, feel that whole left side body take up space. And then let that side go, come through center, take your left shoulder to your left hip, gaze behind to the foot or to the wall. And if you are not in the best relationship with your knees or with your wrists, if you have a towel you could fold or a blanket or you could fold your mat in half, just to give a little extra cushioning to your knees or to your wrists if you need it. So that whole right side, when you inhale, you can feel it lengthen and open. And then come through center and we'll take it to the right one more time. So right shoulder to right hip. And you might be able to get your shoulder a little closer to your hip now that your body's starting to warm up. We'll let that side go. Last time, left shoulder to left hip, gaze behind.
and then back to center and come into any comfortable seated position. So that could be sitting with your legs crossed or your legs extended. Maybe you're sitting on your knees. If you needed to sit on a cushion, you could do that as well. And then we're going to extend the right arm fully out to the right. Bring it across the front of your chest. Use your left forearm to hook the right forearm and draw everything into the front of your left shoulder. So I'm going to turn to the side and do that again. So we'll extend the right arm, bring it across the front of your chest, hook with your left arm, draw everything in. So we are opening the back of the right shoulder, the shoulder blade area. We spend so much time in a day rounded forward, be it over a computer, our phones, driving, watching TV, all of these things, they cause this sort of lazy rounding forward of our shoulders. And that's really not positive movement. We want to activate the shoulder area. So we're intentionally opening and creating space. We're getting some blood flow going to that area. And then release your right arm and second side. So extend your left arm out, bring it across the front of your chest, use your right forearm to hook and draw everything in toward the front of your right shoulder. So we are opening the back of the left shoulder this time. And if you're kind of rounding or slouching here, can you give yourself a nice tall spine, almost as if someone was pulling a string from the top of your head? Let that side go and bring your hands behind your back and again I'm going to spin around and you can either intertwine your fingers or you could bring your palms to where your jean pockets would be or if you have a strap or a towel if you want to use that you can take your hands to whatever distance apart feels good We're going to draw the elbows together and that's going to start to open the front of the chest and you can gently lift your gaze almost to where it would be if you were going to hold a grapefruit between your chin and your chest. So not a really big lift of the chin. So as the elbows draw together, we're opening across the front of the chest. So the pectoralis major muscle and these little muscles in the front of our shoulders. When we are spending all of that time rounded forward, these muscles, they get short and they get tight because there's no activation and no movement for them. So we want to open them up and get that blood flow going, get some space and some opening in that area. And this can feel a little odd if you've never done it before. It's a bit of an odd sensation because we're not used to being open and forward like this. So you might notice your heart rate gets a little askew or you might feel a little bit anxious because this pose can feel vulnerable. And if you're noticing that, just try to find just that natural breath again and just focus on your inhale and your exhale and your body will get used to this as soon as it realizes it's not in any danger. And you can release your hands, 
bring them in front of you, intertwine your fingers and send the tops of your hands forward. So where we were just opening across the front of the chest, now we want to open across the upper back. So the shoulder blades are opening away from each other as we press the hands forward. And when you inhale, see if you can feel your back just opening up, taking up a little more space. Our lungs are actually a little more than 50% located in the back body. So feel those ribs expand, maybe your spine is lengthening. And then drop your hands. And if you want to give your shoulders a few rolls, so a couple of times backward and a couple of times forward. And then take your right hand behind your right hip so it can just come to the floor like a kickstand. Take your left hand just to the top of your right knee. Lift yourself up nice and tall and start to twist to the right. And we don't want to do this in one quick motion. So with each breath, each time you exhale, you can come a little farther into your twist. And we don't want to use this left hand to reef ourselves around. It's just there as a guide. And keep coming into your twist until you start to feel something. Maybe a little tension, maybe a little pressure, definitely not pain. And that point at which you start to feel a little something, that's your edge. And that is exactly where you need to be. You can just allow yourself to settle there when you find it. Let that go, come back to center. And then left hand behind the kick, the hip like a kickstand. Right hand to the left knee, nice and tall out of your waist. And come toward the left. So each exhale, a little farther into your twist. that go come on back to center find your way onto your back and when you get there bend the knees soles of the feet to the floor when you inhale lift your knees over your hips shins are parallel to your mat and allow your legs to fall together left. Your gaze can stay neutral or over the right shoulder and your arms are gonna land wherever you need them to be, whatever feels comfortable. So you could take left palm to right thigh, you could take your hands over your head. Just one last twist to this practice. And if your knees aren't quite connecting with the floor, you could use a book or a block or a rolled up towel to add a little bit of height. You never ever want to contort yourself into making a pose look how you think it should look. You can use props to make that pose come to you.
Take your gaze to center, bring your knees back to center, reset your hips. And then knees over the hips, legs together and allow the legs to fall together right. Option to take your gaze left and you can repeat your arms or try something different. Gaze to center, knees back to center. Take your feet to the floor and then bring the soles of your feet together and allow your knees to open left and right like a book. So reclined cobbler's pose and this is another hip opener. And if this is feeling a little bit intense, you can try sending your toes farther away from you. So toward the bottom of your mat. And if you feel like you've got lots of space in your hips, maybe you inch your heels a little higher towards your pelvis. You can let your palms rest on your belly or out to the sides. This is feeling really good. You're certainly welcome to stay here for a little longer. Otherwise, close up your knees back towards center and then bring your feet six or so inches apart and just give your knees a gentle sway side to side just to release your hips and low back. And once you've done that a few times, send your legs out long on your mat, find your final Shavasana. So your feet maybe to the bottom corners of the mat or beyond. You could take your arms to the side or you could take a palm to belly, palm to heart. Close your eyes or let your gaze be heavy. And just give yourself as much time as you need in this Shavasana, this final resting pose. And when it's time for you to let go of your practice, just do so slowly and with care. There is no need to rush. So I would like to thank you very much for joining me for this stretch and relax practice. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have questions, you're certainly welcome to contact me on my McMaster email, jenstanley at mcmaster.ca, or you can message me on Instagram at jenstanleyyoga. Thank you so much to the McMaster Rec Department for having me film this segment for you. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Namaste.